Adam Lanza was an awkward loner who pressed himself against the wall when others approached in the hallway. Now a shattered town and devastated nation is trying to understand why he would kill his mother and then slaughter 26 children and adults. He had problems, problems that went beyond an adolescent lack of social skills. School officials assigned him a permanent psychologist as a ninth grader and flagged him to the school security chief in middle school. He was mentally ill, clearly, and there were reports he was diagnosed with Asperger's, a milder form of autism, and not something that would lead to his horrific actions. But we really don't know everything. However, this tragedy has put the spotlight on mental health. As one forensic psychologist told USA Today, if we're going to focus on prevention, we can't think about the gunman in the parking lot and what to do with him. We have to get involved a lot earlier. All right, Jim. So this guy was an awkward loner, painfully quiet. So are a lot of teenagers. How do you differentiate, can you? I mean, I think you just know. We're taught to be polite. Like, I, I love when they're like, well, you, you can't judge a book by its cover, but every time I see a school shooter, he looks exactly like I think a school shooter looks. They all have that same stupid, vacant look. Mm. They're the people that give you the creeps, but you're taught that it's socially not polite to acknowledge that you have the creeps. Right. If someone gives you the creeps, it's probably because they're creepy. And I don't care why he did it. I'm sick of motive searching. He's a psychopath. That's why he did it. We, we spend too much time, why did the killer kill? Because he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's insane. There's, you're never going to find a reason that makes sense or that makes it acceptable right. or that makes it less random. So I'm just tired of, of, of obsessing on why the mentally ill do what they do. Well, okay, Jedediah, it's a good point, but psychologists do say the perpetrators of, these, of mass murders, uh, Virginia Tech, for example, other things, all did suffer from serious mental issues, as Jim was saying. Can we focus more attention on these people and try to head, head this stuff off at the pass? I think we need to figure out what's going on and why these mental health issues are going unaddressed. It's the job of a psychologist to figure out if these people pose a real threat. If they're doing their, their job, they will be able to distinguish between the people who are just loners and a little odd versus the people who are dangerous. Another question I have is, were, was he on any medications? Because a lot of these medications that are used to treat depression, anxiety, ADD, have very serious side effects that could potentially make you have outbursts, make you make sides of your personality come out mm -hmm. that you never knew existed and I've seen this happen with kids in schools where their whole personality changes as a result of medication. I'm not saying that's the sole cause but it could definitely be a contributing factor. Okay but of course we don't at this juncture we don't know. We don't know if he's right. been on. I'm saying that's one of the questions that the reporters should be asking. Sure. Is he on any meds? Was he meeting with a psychologist? How often was he attending? All important questions. Right. All right Ambassador so some states have these, uh, these they're called assisted outpatient treatment laws that allow judges to order people with a serious mental illness to, to go into treatment. But the, the thing is, these programs only apply to people that have a history of violence or have been incarcerated or hospitalized. So we don't even know if that would have helped here. Is there anything, what do you think? Well, I think we need to have a discussion about the uh, protection that's been put around mental illness in, in, in many respects for good reasons. It's, it's not the person's fault it, if they suffer from uh, some emotional disturbance. It, it is something, it is a disease. But uh, just because you don't want to stigmatize them for something that's beyond their control doesn't mean that you should, you should have a hands-off attitude. This is not like having uh, a flu. Th this is potentially much more serious. Right. And I think that the notion that, uh, that because mental illness is still something we're trying to understand, you have to leave people alone until a tragedy happens uh, is just the wrong way to look at it. Yeah, the thing is you can help people without stigmatizing them. Right. Well, I think the earlier that you have a serious conversation about this potential and consider involuntary commitment, it's a serious problem. And I think the libertarians uh, understandably are worried about it, but uh, mass murder is a worse problem. Yeah. Bill, so the, the school officials uh, where Lanza went to school, they, they had him join this tech club thing uh, to help him try to be more social, and apparently it didn't help. So people are asking, you know, could the, should the school have done more? Can the school do more? Or is this not, ultimately, is this not the school's responsibility? I don't know if it's the school's responsibility or not. I don't know how socially you can be at a tech club. But, uh, I mean, you also got to wonder, how much is too much as far as this coverage is concerned? Because delusion and narcissism are in the same ballpark. And a lot of these kids, they just need a push. I was looking at a tabloid uh, this weekend, a New York tabloid, 20 
pages of coverage devoted to this. Now the sports section is ten, and after a while, it may, is there, after a while, you got to wonder how much is too much as far as this coverage is concerned, because all these kids got delusions of grandeur, right? Well, in rape cases, all media outlets usually agree to never mention the name of the victim. Maybe something like that can be applied to the actual perpetrator when it comes to something like this, because these kids are all on the edge anyway. And all it takes is a little push. And a lot of the times they see a cohort or someone who did something that maybe has crossed their mind, and they're mentioning his name one after another after another. And in their mind, this is not a bad way to get your name out there. In no. their mind, this is like, well, I'm, if, if this guy's going to go this way, why can't I, I be there and have the, 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 uh, the notoriety that I feel I deserve? There's something to be, I don't know. I don't know what the answer yeah, is, think, but it's a lot. I think there's a lot to this. Uh, you know, one reason uh, the media don't broadcast terrorist demands or read terrorist manifestos is they don't want to encourage other terrorists. Right. And and in the in the peculiar way I think the, the, the minds of some of these people work, they see this as a way to get publicity. If you're a loner, if you don't think anybody uh, pays any attention to you, cares about you, or loves you, and yet you see what happens with this obsessive coverage, I, th I think it's over the top for many reasons, uh, but I think its potential impact on people who could go over the edge is something that the media need to have a serious conversation about. Instead of blaming other people, this really is something the media can affect itself. Jim, I know you have strong feelings on this. We were talking about it in the green room and that, you know, you pretty much agree with them. Let me bring this up though. We don't, the media covers Saddam Hussein. The media covers, you know, uh, crazy dictators. We do cover people sure. like that because it's newsworthy. So where do you, how do you say, well, you shouldn't cover this when it's clearly newsworthy? Well, Saddam Hussein is, you're not going to inspire other people to become a dictator by covering Saddam Hussein. And you have to cover because it, it is legitimate news and we do want to know what's going on. But there, there becomes a point where it becomes tabloid and disgusting mm. and the media knows where that line is. Uh, psychologists have been telling them for years how to cover these stories. They, they're not naive to it. They cover every time this happens. We have the same boring gun discussions. Is it mental illness or is it guns? And the media never has the discussion. What did we do to contribute? To when, the, when the shooting happened in Aurora, you knew more were coming because they're giving these little worms exactly what they want. Yeah. They're letting yeah. them go out in a blaze of glory and the press knows they're doing it and they don't care. Don't let them th feign ignorance. Like, well, we're just doing our job. They absolutely know, and they just somehow admonish themselves of any guilt because uh, they, they feel like they, they can hide behind just doing their job. Uh -huh. It's disgusting. All right, uh, Jenna Dyer, we're going to talk about guns in a minute, but I, I, I'm, just, I'm only bringing it up now for one reason. I want to stay in this mental health thing for a second. I know a little about, about guns. Uh, I saw a lot of just flat-out wrong information being passed around over the weekend on Twitter, on news reports. Uh, stuff about automatic weapons, which weren't involved in this. People that not understanding what a semi-automatic weapon is, apparently. So to get back to mental health is most of the people who are talking about that, including us right here, aren't experts. We probably don't know what the hell we're talking about, right? When it comes to mental health, yeah. I think you need mental health experts to be up there talking. And I, I, to Fox News' credit, I think they did have a lot of doctors on that were discussing the implications that, the, that could, this could have for kids who survived, how the situation should be dealt with, you know, day by day, how it should be explained to your children if they weren't involved, what's going on, what could possibly... We had a crowd hammer on who was talking about getting into the mind. He was the first person I think I heard who said, we need to get into the minds of these people and figure out what's going on. We need to address the mental health issue. He was the first person to call attention to that. So yeah, I think so. But to your question before about schools also and how much they can do, we have to remember that this in many cases ultimately resides with parents. Yeah. And those are the people who are with these kids 24-7. Those are the people that, that are in an authoritative position where they can make these kinds of decisions about what kind of help their kids get. At a certain point, the school does legally need to step back and say this is the job of parents. Yeah. Alright. Uh, I want to move on to guns. Uh, on Sunday, uh, at Sunday night's vigil, President Obama hinted he would enter the debate over gun control in the weeks to come. No single law, no set of laws can eliminate evil from the world or prevent every senseless act of violence in our society. But that can't be an excuse for inaction. Surely we can do better than this. In the coming weeks I'll use whatever power this office holds to engage my fellow citizens from law enforcement to mental health professionals to parents and educators in an effort aimed at preventing more tragedies like this. 
So then on Monday, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney said the issue will require a, quote, comprehensive solution, unquote, involving gun control and other measures. And Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein has said she will introduce a de facto renewal of the assault weapons ban that expired in 2004. Meanwhile, Republican Congressman Louis Gohmert noted on Fox News Sunday that stricter gun control does not necessarily mean that crime rates go down. Washington, D.C. around us ought to be the safest place in America, and it's not. Chicago ought to be safe. It's not because their gun laws don't work. All right, Ambassador, on Monday, uh, Senator Joe Manchin, Republican, uh, who is an avid Democrat. hunter. And, oh, I, I'm sorry, right, right, Democrat, but who's an avid hunter <laughs> and NRA member. Uh, he said gun control legislation should be con uh, needs to be part of the discussion. Have we sort of, are we seeing a shift in the gun control debate, in the tone at least? Well, I think it's too early to tell. I, I think all of these issues need debate, de debated. Uh, but, but many of the people who are now saying, see, this proves you need stronger gun control laws, held that position before the Newtown massacre and, uh, and for various reasons that have nothing to do with what happened there. The real question is, if you change the existing gun control laws, would it have stopped Newtown? Would it have stopped Aurora? Would it have stopped? And the answer in most cases seems to me is no. And I think that ties in in part to the point you made about people not really understanding the nature of some of these weapons. You know, you call something semi-automatic, that sounds sort of almost like automatic. I haven't fired a weapon on automatic in over 40 years right. when I was on active duty. Most of the people who talk about it have never done it. But if you've ever done it once, you, you, you know what it means. And I think also it goes to this question of defense. You know, it, you can't lock up all the emotionally disturbed people. You can't get rid of all the guns. So you're always going to have the potential. What steps to protect the schools uh, are you taking to declare them gun-free zones, meaning the teachers don't have guns, there's no security, just opens them up to this kind of attack? Yeah. Uh, Jedediah, another, I just want to quote Senator Manchin again. He said, I don't know anybody in the sporting or hunting arena that goes out with an assault rifle. I don't know anybody who needs 30 rounds in a clip to go hunting. First of all, I find it odd that an avid hunter would confuse a clip and a magazine, but that's a separate issue. Uh, do you agree with him, though? Does he have a point? No, I, I think, you know, you also need to keep in mind that Adam Lanza tried to buy a legal gun and was denied. He refused the background check. He refused to uh, have, to, to live out the waiting period. So he didn't get a legal gun. He stole someone else's gun. The gun control law that was in place that prevented him from getting a legal gun worked. What didn't work was the fact that he stole somebody else's gun. That, there's nothing you can really do about that. If a crazy person is going to steal someone else's gun, odds are that they're going to get it. So, and also the school gun-free zone. Right. All of these places, the malls, the movie theaters that these people often go to are gun-free zones for a reason, because they know people won't be armed to protect themselves. Agree. I just want to bring up one point. You could argue that if his mother hadn't been allowed to purchase the gun, he wouldn't have been able to steal it from her. You could argue that, but then that's like saying that every person who is a law-abiding citizen has to be punished and can't protect themselves because someone else who isn't a law-abiding citizen may decide to steal their stuff. But that's, now, that's his what mother, gun control is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, and you I know, mean, should his mother have been more careful, knowing that she had someone in the house. Those are all questions that we don't know. We don't know what kind of safety precautions there were to keep those guns out of his hand. We don't know what was going on in terms of the family dynamic. I yeah. would argue that, yes, if you have a child who has mental issues, that you, you who you think is teetering on the edge, and you have guns in the household, it's your responsibility to make sure those guns are protected. Absolutely. Yeah. Jim, what about the idea that school officials should be armed? Some people are going around saying this now. Uh, is this overreacting? The, the, the fact is, schools are among the very safest places for kids. Because if you arm the school officials, one of them is going to snap. Well, then we oh, shouldn't yeah. be them. We got to arm the cafeteria ladies. But then one of them is going to send. It, it doesn't matter because whoever has it, if one of that group snaps, then people go, oh my God, they should. It's like nothing. It, this doesn't change anybody's opinion. When something like this happens, people who are very, very for gun, it strengthens their opinion. If I was there with my gun, I'd have stopped it. And people who are anti gun go, see, this is what happens with guns. People get killed. It just becomes a talking point that people use to just yeah. strengthen their side of the argument. Well, it doesn't, it changes nothing. Well, I, I do think in the uh, case of the, the school attack, the principal and some of the other teachers very courageously went toward the yes. gunman in an effort to protect the children and died as a result of their 
uh, courage. Now, had they had weapons, would the result have been different? It, it couldn't. It, it's hard to imagine it could have been worse than 26-year-olds being killed. So I think this possibility, with training, with supervision, right. uh, I think would possibly deter people like the uh, the Newtown killer. But, so what do we start doing? Do we start requiring that principals and teachers get gun safety training? You know, I, I don't know, but I think this ought to be part of the debate, that the notion of the gun-free zone uh, does it, you know, maybe you don't want your students to have guns, but that doesn't mean you don't want some system, a security guard, for example, to protect the students. This uh, uh, Lanza uh, committed suicide when he knew the police had arrived. Why? They were the people with the guns. Right. That's what he feared. How about an off duty cop? I'd be happy with, you know, a, 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 an right. or a military yeah. guy. That I would. I'd well, be you're talking like about. an air marshal kind of system. Like yeah, a, somebody there who's used to having, because a teacher, even with a gun and being very well intentioned, being trained with a gun is one thing, but running in when there's a maniac firing. Right, is absolutely. A totally different. A absolutely, thing. could yes. not agree more. Uh, Bill, I saw a quote. I, I'm now blanking on who it was from that said that this is going to be uh, the equivalent for schools at 9/11 was for airports. Is that what we want? Do we want the equivalent of a TSA in schools? What more can they do at this point? I mean, I can't speak to specifically to what the school was doing, but weren't they at the top of the list when it came to safe schools? I mean, they had doors that were all but locked. No. They had all sorts of security provisions. The guy kind of stormed his way in. I mean, at this point, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Even if teachers are caring but uh, I don't the thing that, I, that I've, I've seen only a little bit of here but I certainly see it with other tragedies like this is <clears throat> I don't understand when people start equating gun control with banning guns and that always seems to be the parallel that I see made and it's just one is completely different than the other and you find that a lot of gun owners are completely for common sense movements that involve gun control but it seems the argument stops right when you mention the words because that immediately equates ban ban second amendment second amendment but uh, Frank Lutz recently did a poll no uh, liberal he and uh, he asked gun owners, uh, not NRA, NRA gun owners and NRA gun owners, if, that, if there should be a required criminal background check on gun owners and gun shop employees. 87% of non-NRA gun owners said yes. 74% of NRA gun owners said yes. Uh, concealed carry permits should only be restricted to individuals who have completed a safety training course and are 21 and older. 84 of non-NRA said yes. 74% of NRA gun owners said yes. So there's a consensus here. Right. But what you don't hear is these people. What you hear are representatives of the NRA. And and far right political strategists, whatever that means, on TV doing their agenda because the fact of the matter is, okay. there's less there's less people buying guns now. There's more people buying a lot of guns, uh, but gun ownership in households across America has gone down big time. Okay, but let me so take, they got to keep the numbers up. Let me take the other side of this, and this was one of the things that I saw over the weekend, and I saw it on TV, on Twitter, whatever. All these people saying it's, we need to have a conversation on gun control. It's time for a conversation on gun control. My feeling is, by all means, let's have a conversation. But most of these people don't want a conversation because a conversation involves listening to people who disagree with you and yeah. ideally starting from the premise that both sides are coming from a position of good faith. The majority of the people that are calling for, you know, saying, oh, it's time for a conversation on gun control, they don't want a conversation. They just want gun control. They want a monologue. They want to yeah. be able to talk about, about what they feel. Mm. The, the bottom line is the stats, if you look around the country, the, 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 the states, the cities, the places that have the strictest gun control laws often have the highest crime levels. The, the, that's because cr it's a deterrent for criminals. If you have regular Americans who are law-abiding citizens that can arm themselves, I mean, think about it. If you had a security guard protecting you all day, and I threw this question out to Piers Morgan, uh, or, or one of the media folks that were out there talking gun control, but would you want them armed? I certainly would. If I was out there and I was a high-profile figure, I would want my security team armed. Why are regular Americans not entitled to that right? It makes no sense yeah. to me. All right, we got to move on, but I just want to say one thing. My, uh, a big thing going on here is everyone says in the wake of this, we got to we got to pass them. We got to do something. We got to do something. I am opposed to calling for legislation, passing legislation in the heat of the moment when emotions are high. To me, that's how you end up with things like the Patriot Act, which end up having a lot of unintended consequences or intended consequences that people didn't quite realize when they were voting for it. I think have a conversation, absolutely, but we don't need to pass anything in the next couple of days or anything like that.